Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this product from Lexa, and what makes it special is that it's an NVMe-based SSD which works on your Gen 4 times 4 connections on your motherboard. So it's one of the high-speed connectors, and it works up to 7,400 megabytes per second. Yes, 7,400. If you're not sure how that compares to a normal SSD, your traditional two and a half inch SSDs usually go up to around about 500, 550 megabytes per second. A normal NVMe me SSD will go up to potentially up to around about 3,000, maybe 3,500 megabytes per second. But with this, because this is a Gen 4, uh, it can go all the way up to 7,400 megabytes per second, giving it some really quick speeds. We're going to test this today and see how it performs. But if you are interested in purchasing, click the links in the description just below, and it'll give you the latest prices as well as where to purchase it from. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well, and that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel, and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos, and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, as you can see, we've got the Lexar Professional NM800. It's an M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 4 x 4 NVMe SSD. It's got read speeds up to 7,400 megabytes per second. It doesn't mention the write speed, or not that I can see on the box, but from what I can see from the press releases, it will go up to 5,400 on the write speed. We've got the one terabyte version. Just to give you a rough idea, the popular uh, Samsung Evo 980, sorry, the Samsung Pro 980 goes up to 7,000 megabytes per second. So if this does actually go at 7,400, it beats the Samsung Pro 980. And again, on the right, on the Samsung Pro 980, it goes up to 5,000 or 5,100 megabytes per second where this goes up to 5,400. So we could have a really fast SSD on our hand from Lexar here, which I'm happy to be reviewing. Again, this is the one terabyte version. On the side of the box, it just tells you about the model number, same on that. On the back, you've got a lot of specifications on there. It's up to you if you want to read about it on there, but it tells you about the performance and it's NVMe 1.4, it's efficient. Obviously, you need to make sure you're using an NVMe 1.4 socket on the motherboard for it to get those speeds. So if you've got a older NVMe socket, it will only go at Gen 3 speeds. It needs to be a Gen 4 socket basically for it to perform at its full potential. Okay, as you can see, we've got the contents of the box here. Not much really to see in all honesty. You've got a screw which you use to screw the NVMe SSD into your motherboard, which I'll show you how to use in a few seconds. You've got a manual there. It's more of a quick start guide with lots of different bits of information for different languages. Uh, don't see any diagrams. It's all writing, so not really much to see there. Would have preferred to see a QR code on the box saying scan here to see instructions if anyone did want it. You've got your NVMe drive there. Doesn't look anything really different. Well, what do you expect, to be honest with you? It says Lexar, it's got a nice gold stripe across it. It's got the 800 because that's the NM800. And it says it's a professional model there as well. Otherwise, not a huge amount to see in all honesty. So if I can get it in focus on the screen, there you go. On the other side, you do have some serial numbers and model numbers and all your different bits like that there as well. Again, not a huge amount to see, and that's going to be hidden anyway on the back side of the motherboard. Nice to see that they didn't stick all the model number information on this side, uh, so it does actually look pretty nice if you have got it on your motherboard and it just doesn't have a big barcode across and white writing and serial numbers. So they did think about it at least a little bit um, with design-wise, so that is good. 
So otherwise it's pretty straightforward. If you are fitting it to a motherboard, bear in mind this is a plain motherboard. It doesn't have anything fitted to it at the moment, like CPUs, RAM or anything like that. If you are attaching it to your motherboard, you need to make sure obviously you connect it to the right socket. So you've got two sockets on this board. Um, if, you're use, if you've got a motherboard what's got Gen 4, which is Generation 4 NVMe socket or PCI Express version 4, that's the socket it'll go in or that one. But just make sure your board and you check your manual which one is gen 4 if your board supports it otherwise it's not going to run at full speed but on just demonstration purposes i'm going to slot it into this socket here it goes in like that you get a screwdriver a small phillips and then the screw you push the drive down and it screws into that little hole like that so it's pretty straightforward in all honesty so there's not a huge amount to go wrong or to do but if you're unsure always take it to your local independent computer store uh, obviously we don't want you messing it up but that's it straightforward but again make sure you have got gen 4 socket on your motherboard and your cpu supports and everything else otherwise it isn't going to support it as simple as that or it will work but it'll just work at a slower speed so instead of for example 7400 megabytes per second it's going to be 3000 possibly or 3500 or something in that range so just make sure you have got a board what will support up to that speed Okay, so what I'm doing is comparing the speeds against a Fire Cuda, which is a Seagate Drive 520, which you can see there, and then you can see the Lexar Drive there. So they're basically the same drive, one terabyte a piece, and we're just basically seeing, obviously, the performance. Bear in mind the Seagate drive has had a little bit more usage, but it's still saying when we check it, it's running at 99% of its health. And the results we got are very similar when we tested it, when we got it in for review around a year ago. So what we've got here is basically the left-hand column is the Seagate drive, and the right-hand column is the Lexar drive. And as you can see on the Lexar drive, you can see the read speed here goes all the way up to roughly, I think the highest on there is 6.92 gigabytes per second, or 6,920 megabytes per second. So that's pretty fast read, a little bit under what they state, but it's still pretty fast. Now the write speed was getting up to 5,000, uh, 460 megabytes or 5.46 gigabytes per second and as you can see the graph is pretty constant so it goes starts slower and gets bigger and stays pretty constant once it gets to running at that higher speed depending on the size of data it's writing or reading well if you compare it against the Seagate drive you can see the read speeds are very similar um, but they only go up to 5.21 gigabits or gigabits gigabytes sorry uh, 5.21 gigabytes per second which is 5210 megabytes per second but what's interesting is if you look at the write speed and again this is using the program called Atto uh, the write speed is all over the place so anywhere from just uh, over uh, 1 gigabits per second sorry 1 gigabytes per second all the way up to 3.88 which is a little bit strange because uh, it's all over the place the right read speed's fine it's just the write speed on top of that we did a test using crystal disk mark now bear in mind and the reason why the speed's different on this is because we've noticed something strange about the drive the drive gets extremely hot as you can see over here it goes up to 87 degrees Celsius. And when we're finding it gets really hot, the speed drops. So we were getting 6,224 megabytes per second here on the read. The write was all right, 5,771. But when we added a cooler to it, so for example, the heat sink, which comes with our motherboard, the actual read speed, as you can see over here, went all the way up to 7,451. 
so you can see there is a big difference and they actually drop the temperature by around about 15 degrees and even some points 20 degrees depending on what we were doing so i would suggest if you're going to install a fast drive like this you put a heat sink on it or if you've got a motherboard what's got a heat sink built in you attach that otherwise it could potentially slow the read speed down but what's funny is is the other test results like the for example the right and the other sequences like the 4k and so forth um actually performed better mostly when it was running hot so it only seems to be the real real uh, test what most people test it for is the read speed and the write speed uh, for the main sequence uh, you can see there is a big difference but still comparing it against the Seagate drive here you can see there's a huge difference between the numbers uh, especially on the right side of things so I think Lexar's definitely got a winner here for any reason you want to see the IOs that's inputs and outputs that basically means how many calculations you get per second basically uh, you can see them here the read goes up to I think it's 87,000 IOs uh, on the Lexar compared to the Seagate uh, which goes to about 80 so about 7,000 difference bear in mind I must admit on this test the Seagate did seem more even uh, and there was one or two drop-offs on the Lexar but overall on average the speeds were higher on the Lexar drive but again this can differ on slightly different tests uh, the Lexar drive was tested as a secondary drive so it doesn't have windows on or anything like this so this is the results if you would have it as a slave drive or a data drive and so forth let's have a quick look at the Lexar SSD dash software which you get free with the SSD well when I say you get it free you have to download it from their website and it'll only work with Lexar drives but as you can see here, as soon as you've installed it, it gives you disk information so you can select your drive. Obviously, this is the only Lexar drive we've got in the machine. It gives you the serial number, firmware, capacity, and basically unallocated space and everything like that. You can actually see a graph here, use space, free space, and you can again see what drive letters you're using it for. And again, shows your free space, use space in the file system and what mode you've got it set up, for example, PCIe 4 and so forth and the interface. So pretty straightforward. There doesn't seem to be anywhere where you can update the firmware from here, which might have been nice and handy if they even do a firmware updates. Uh, obviously, they may not do that, but it might be a separate download if they ever need to. Again, you can see temperature on there and the health status of the drive as well. Temperature at the moment, we don't have the heat sink installed on it because we're doing some testing as the way it showed up, for example. We don't want to obviously test it with a heat sink on and say, yeah, it only produces uh, 30 degrees worth of uh, heat. When in reality, if you get it out of the box and don't attach a heat sink, it's actually more like 55 in general usage. But again, depends on the machine you're using, fan positions, where you've got your graphics card, if they're covering it up and different things like that. But I would really recommend you do get some sort of heat sink to go with the drive you've also got smart information on the left so you can click on that it tells you all the information about it so you've got your raw uh, threshold status and everything there you've got secure erase this is basically where you can erase the disk obviously i suggest you set it up as a slave drive so for example drive def whatever as long as it's not got your operating system and if you're doing this uh, otherwise it's it's not going to work basically i've not tried it but i can't see how it would be able to wipe itself if obviously it's uh, in the process of being run so uh, basics on there you've got secure erase or enhanced and press start so that's pretty good you've also got data migration if you're not sure what that means it may basically means cloning it allows you to clone from one drive to this drive so if let's for, say for example you've already got a hard drive in the machine it's got your windows in you add this new ssd you can then basically say right let me pick for example this samsung ssd here i want to clone that ssd over onto the new lexar drive you do that and then you click start but obviously you need to make sure the drive you're copying from is going to be the same size or smaller than the one you're copying two so for example i'm not going to be able to copy from an eight terabyte drive onto a one terabyte but i should be able to copy a 500 drive onto 
obviously a one terabyte drive which is a thousand gigabytes but it shows you here the drive and gives you the option there and then you basically got the option for start you just press start and away you go and it shows you the process so that'll clone the drive basically and go from there otherwise you've got a refresh button at the top right hand corner which refreshes the program so ideal if you're checking smart status or temperatures and stuff like that uh, and then you've got an about option at the bottom left which gives you information about the uh, the software but otherwise it's uh, pretty straightforward to use there shouldn't be any issues Thank you for watching this video everyone, it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.